Hello and welcome to my channel. In this one I'm going to do a drawing of a camel and I'm going to use colored pencils on sanded paper. I also want to talk a little bit about this paper that I used for the drawing and it's uh, the UART 800 paper. Uh, in most of my previous drawings where I used colored pencils or pastels I normally used either uh, paper primed with some clear gesso or uh, regular sandpaper from a hardware store that was like a fine sandpaper 1000 grit. So this is actually very similar but this is the first time that I'm using a little bit something a little bit more expensive and artist quality paper and this is actually very good paper. So uh, while I'm showing you the drawing process of that camel I'm also going to do a little bit of a review of this paper. Now this paper was brought to me by my sister from the US because I can't find it locally in my country and if I were to order it online uh, the shipping and everything would be way too expensive and the paper is already a little bit uh, on the expensive side. And now the good thing about it is that it can be uh, it can be bought in huge rolls and that way it's kind of cheaper because it pays off but because the rolls are so huge <laughs> it would be difficult for my sister to transport it so uh, she actually cut it <laughs> with a with an angular cutter in several of these smaller rolls or rather shorter rolls and was able to transport it and I still have a ton of drawing paper in there so I'm going to be working with that for a while now and I'm going to be testing it with various types of pencils with various types of media. So as you can see my sister is one of the most deserving people when it comes to the development of my artistic career. But let's get on with the drawing process. Actually no, actually I, I want to talk a little bit more about the paper. As you can see I've already done some testing here. We're going to move on to the drawing process in a minute but let, let's just have a look at this. So the paper behaves very similar to the fine sandpaper that I used in many of my previous drawings. So it's very good with colored pencils. You can easily work from dark to light and from light to dark you can easily layer uh, lighter pencils on top of the darker ones. You can see that I'm actually getting very clean marks. Um, very clean marks on top of the darker layers. So it works really well and it also works really well, well with pastels. Now. Uh, one of the shortcomings that you'll notice uh, with colored pencils at least is that it's more difficult to cover large areas and to create smooth gradients and things like that. So for that you have several options. You can actually tone the paper a little bit using um, watercolor for example or maybe even a gouache or acrylics but I would prefer a very thin a layer of watercolor because that way you retain uh, that nice tooth to work with like for example I, like I did here and here so uh, just a little bit of color to tone the paper and that way uh, you don't have to overcome uh, the background color of the paper if the target color you're trying to achieve is much different however if you if, if the when you're turning the paper if the layer of color is too thick uh, you're gonna lose that tooth so you need to keep that in mind but other than that I think the paper performed really well and now I'm gonna show you how I did that drawing of a camel let's start and the paper I'm gonna be working on is about 10 inches in height and 7 inches in width so it's not going to it's not going to be a very large drawing I want to start with something a little bit simpler and smaller but not too simple and not too small because I do want to test this paper. The pencils I'm going to be using are Faber-Castell Polychromos as usual because I tend to use these most of the time and uh, I thought that this camel would be a nice subject. The reference is going to be in the description. Now uh, I started out by uh, going over some parts of my sketch with a brown colored pencil and then I'm going to be doing a little bit more work on the background. The background is mostly going to be light blue so it's uh, like a light blue sky with, a, with just a few clouds. So this is a, the first opportunity for me to test this surface <coughs> and I can already tell that 
it behaves very similarly to the sandpaper I've used in many of my previous drawings. So it's very very similar to that fine sandpaper I've used before. Um, the grain or the grit is a little bit different but in, in terms of the way it's applied it's actually very similar and uh, that already also means uh, the same issues or the same problems when working with colored pencils because you're not going to be able to fill that tooth entirely unless you use more of the pencil or use more of the pressure if you try blending like this, and I tried blending a little bit, I tried playing, a lot, playing around with this uh, tutilian. It helps a little bit, but it's not really uh, perfect because it can't really push that pigment into all of the smaller uh, spaces which weren't filled in by the colored pencil. I also put a little bit of this uh, warmer light thalo blue to see what kind of color I can come up with because the first color I used was a light sky blue color and that's what I'm going to use for the most part. So I did a little bit more blending just to see how it works and um, the fact that I layered these two pencils didn't really help me much. Uh, <clears throat> it is only later that I discovered what actually helps. So I kept on uh, working on this sky patiently. Obviously, when you're working with colored pencils, this is slower than if I were to use pastel pencils. It does cover large areas, but a little bit more slowly and less thoroughly. So there is a little bit of texture. Now, at this point, I switched to a, a cool uh, gray, a light cool gray pencil, which is a little bit duller and a little bit lighter than blue. And when I started using that on top of the blue color, I actually realized that this was the perfect way to blend it. So uh, on this surface uh, with these pencils, the best way to blend, in my opinion, is to layer lighter pencils on top of the darker ones. That way you muddy them a little bit and you remove a lot of that texture. You, you end up with something that is uh, a little bit lighter but also smoother color it helps you achieve smoother gradients smoother transitions and remove a lot of that texture you will lose uh, you will use uh, a lot of your pencils in the process but it's actually not that bad it's something you need to expect um, the good thing is that on this surface the colors tend to be a lot more vibrant than on regular paper and of course the main advantage of this paper as you will see once I start working on the main subject is the fact that you can put lighter details on top of the darker layers easily because this surface allows you to work both from dark to light and light to dark uh, adding multiple layers speaking of which I'm now gonna add some clouds on top of that blue sky and I'm using whatever is left of my white pencil and I um, have only a, a, a tiny bit of it left so I'm, I have to use this pencil holder but as you can see I'm drawing some light clouds here now I can make cleaner marks and cleaner lines but that's not really what I'm trying to do here I want to draw something that looks like a bunch of uh, light uh, semi-transparent scattered clouds kind of like what you see in the reference photo if you if you check it out checked it out you you would see what it looks like so i'm just going to keep adding those here at the top the rest of the sky in the middle and at the bottom is mostly going to be um, kind of plain sky without any clouds but here at the bottom uh, near the horizon the sky is going to be getting a little bit lighter and a little bit duller so here i'm going to start with that light cool gray and then uh, gr make a gradual transition towards the slightly darker and more bluish tones at the, in, in the middle and at the top. And as you can see, using the combination of these two pencils, I'm actually able to cover the background thoroughly, and I'm able to create a fairly smooth background that doesn't have much texture. Obviously, it's not as perfect or not as smooth 
and definitely not as quick is if I were uh, able if I were using the um, pastel pencils or soft pastels but it's still pretty good it wasn't that bad now <clears throat> another advantage of this paper is the fact that uh, the color of the paper itself is fairly light it's kinda like um, yellowish off white color very light color which means that it's not that difficult to draw larger areas of lighter color like for example when I, uh, when I use that uh, uh, sandpaper 1000 grit sandpaper that I bought in hardware stores it was usually of darker color like dark gray or dark bluish gray and when you're trying to draw large areas uh, of lighter value like the sky or something it can be a little bit difficult to, ov uh, to overcome or to subdue that background color and um, you need a, a lot of layering in order to hide that background color here it's a little bit easier because the color is lighter and if you need a different color you can just tone the paper a little bit which I'm going to talk a little bit more a bit later. Now as you can see I started working on the main subject and I started out with a little bit of um, burnt ochre and then a touch of sanguine color. So I'm going to use some uh, yellowish, brownish and reddish colors for the camel and also some pinkish and lighter yellowish colors. But here at the top of this hump there is a little bit of longer hair and it's also a little bit darker so I used some burnt uh, sienna which is like a darker reddish brown and I'm even, even going to use uh, a darker brown like a burnt umber but first I'm mostly working with this burnt sienna uh, because uh, it's uh, creating a nice texture that looks like slightly longer curly fur so I added a touch of uh, that burnt umber at the top because we have some darker values there and then for some lighter details I added a touch of uh, ivory colored pencil which is very light but obviously once I layer it on top of um, some other colors it's uh, not going to be as light. I can actually control how clean the marks I'm creating will be um, by using a different amount of pressure by using duller or sharper pencils a lot of these things come into play but um, it's just something you have to feel when you're working with this surface but if you worked with sanded papers before um, it'll be it, it'll not be that difficult to adapt to working with you art because I think it's a really good paper and I think I'm going to be able to create some nice looking drawings with it. So I started out with this with this one, but I'm going to do a series of drawings on this surface and I'm going to really try to test it out uh, with different kinds of pencils. I'm starting to add some uh, slightly darker and a little bit more reddish tones here around the belly and the thigh area where there is more shadow, like some Indian red and some other colors. Um, Venetian red Mm. but uh, making that duller and blending that by putting some lighter colors on top and one of those uh, lighter colors I'm putting on top is also the cinnamon uh, colored pencil uh, which is duller and uh, a little bit more like a flashy pinkish skin tone but it actually works in a combination with all of these other colors so now I'm moving on to the hind legs here and I'm going to have to work a little bit in between them and now one of the things that I found was that uh, I didn't have problems with edges here because colored pencils don't really smudge that much on this surface uh, which is both a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because um, um, even though there appears to be a little bit of residue here and there which I have to blow off there's really not much you can do with that residue and it's, that residue is not going to smudge or ruin your drawings. Most of the most of the pigment, at least with these polychromos colored pencils, kind of sticks to the paper and um, um, I don't even think that I'm going to have to use a fixative or anything. Here around that groin area and, and under the belly and on the inner part, inner part of the thighs I had to use a little bit more shadow a bit more darker value so I use that burnt umber again 
which is a darker brown and then I used a little bit of those lighter pencils here and there on the legs to show which parts of the legs are catching some light and which of them are more in the shadow and I also added a bit of details to those hooves uh, but eventually I had to go in with a black colored pencil to add some even darker value and even more shadow, deeper shadow in some of the darker areas of those legs and in between the legs and I think that kind of increased the range of value and made everything a bit more three-dimensional. I added a little bit of that here at the top of that hump and then I simply moved on to drawing um, the other legs or the other hind leg. Um, one of the things that I found a little bit tricky uh, was that maybe I tried using a little bit too many uh, pencils, maybe I should have limited it to fewer colors. So I kept kind of going back and forth between some pinkish and then yellowish, then reddish and brownish tones. Maybe it could have been a little bit simpler, but honestly I'm not an expert on colors. So I was just sort of playing around with colors and it was a, a largely enjoyable process for me. And I don't think that the subject was too challenging, in my opinion. It was, it is detailed, but not super difficult and super detailed. You can see how I'm adding these lighter details with an ivory colored pencil, uh, making sure that some parts of this belly area appear lighter because they're catching more light from the light source, or they're, maybe they're a little bit more exposed to the light source, unlike the lower part of the belly, which is uh, mainly in the shadow. Uh, for the shadow areas and the darker areas, I used this burnt sienna for the most part, which is like a reddish brown. I thought that it would go well with other colors that I used as base colors. And uh, I mostly used that burnt sienna to <clears throat> define the transitions between different parts of the body. But where I needed to add more shadow and make uh, something a little bit darker, I would always switch to that burnt umber, which is a darker brown and also a little bit duller. But it worked, I think, and occasionally every now and then I would just add a little bit of black colored pencil to make something even darker. So you can see how I'm working on the front leg here. I uh, drew that wrinkly knee area and even added a few veins. And for the light details, again, I used that uh, lighter ivory colored pencil, that short uh, yellowish white pencil. So here, uh, almost half the body was done, so I started moving on to the neck area. And uh, initially, I was afraid that it was going to be a little bit too thick, so I made some minor modifications. On this surface it can be a little bit difficult to erase some of the marks. Actually it's not that bad but just to make sure I obtained the initial sketch, uh, a very simple sketch by tracing first and then I worked on top of that with a brown pencil to create a slightly more detailed sketch using freehand once I was sure that I had all, all of the main body parts in place. Uh, but, I, like I said, it's not that bad. You can actually erase a little bit, but you would have to use a kneaded eraser rather than a regular eraser because I think that the kneaded eraser lifts up um, the pigment nicely and uh, doesn't smudge or ruin the, the appearance of the paper. So working on the ears and the head, trying to block in the head a little bit first with some... Uh, with some... Um, uh, base colors uh, using a combination of burnt ochre and some sienna and then adding some darker details first to this hump because there are two of them uh, so the, the one in the front which is a little bit uh, smaller or shorter and uh, has a little bit of uh, less hair or le uh, shorter hair maybe and then maybe adding some suggestions of the texture of that fur, the curliness of that hair, because the length of the fur varies a little bit. In some areas it's a little bit shorter, like on the legs uh, and on some parts of the head, but here on the 
on the back and on those humps it's a little bit longer there's a little bit of longer hair and it's, it, it appears kind of curly <coughs> so I'm moving on to the head here and I'm trying to define the anatomy of the head a little bit better I'm gonna make a short break in narrating the drawing process because I wanna talk a little bit more about the paper itself so uh, like I said I am pretty happy with the way it performed but and once again, one of the major problems is covering these large areas and making sure that they don't have texture in those cases where you don't want texture. So one of the solutions that I suggested and one of the solutions that the manufacturers of the paper suggest is priming the, or rather toning the paper uh, with watercolor, for example. And that actually works pretty well, but as I've already mentioned, it's important to apply a thin layer of paint because otherwise you will lose some of that tooth. Uh, you can't expect it. You can't expect to put a thick layer of paint onto there and expect the surface of the paper to perform in the same way because that's not going to work. Uh, that tooth can get saturated. It can get smoothed out. So. If you um, want to make this background color, color a little bit darker, for example, maybe more brownish or something, you can use a little bit of uh, watercolor on top of that and you will still have enough tooth to work with to apply a couple of layers of colored pencil or several layers of pastel pencils. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind. But it, it's good to have that option because it will uh, make your job uh, a lot easier. So, so in this case, on, on the, for this piece, I didn't use any toning. I didn't use any watercolor. I mostly, I, I just worked with these uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. But I'm probably going to try to do that in some other drawing just to see how that works because I think it, it, it's an interesting technique and it might be worth a try. Uh, again, I'm, um, I'm I'm back to working on this uh, head and the mouth area, just trying to define it uh, a little bit better and deepening some of the shadows and cleaning up some of the edges like that lower edge of the head. And uh, now the head looks a little bit better and more detailed, but I'm also adding a, a touch of black colored pencil here and there just to make some of these shadow areas even darker. So I think I got the, the anatomy of the head mostly right. Uh, it's going to look even better once I add some lighter colors to make some of those lighter portions of the head stand out which will make the head look even more three-dimensional because the way to create that illusion of volume when whatever you're drawing anything is of course to have a nice range of value uh, between the or nice value contrast between the darker areas and lighter areas so this is the ivory colored pencil which I already used on several parts of the, uh, other parts of the body and here I'm using it on this cheek area um, to create a suggestion of that texture of short fur but also to make that cheek area stand out a little bit more so I did the same thing around the lower part of the nostrils and the lower jaw and that made it look more three-dimensional I think so after that it's time to do a bit more work on the background again I have to layer this uh, light sky blue thoroughly as you can see it's always leaving a little bit of those uh, lighter yellowish spaces which aren't covered. In order to cover them thoroughly, I would just have to try to work like a tiny segment by segment and maybe even use a, a bit more pressure in order to bury the pigment deep into the grain of the paper. Because the blending doesn't, with regular blending tools, doesn't really work that well but as you can see blending with a lighter pencil works really well as I'm applying this light cool gray on top of that uh, light cool blue you can see that I'm getting a color that's just a little bit lighter than the color I applied initially but it's way smoother with way less texture and that's sort of what I wanted to accomplish in the first place just defining, back to defining the edge of the head and the neck a little bit better because there are some longer hairs there and I want 
uh, obviously I want the main subject to stand out against the background nicely I want to have a clear contrast between the two and uh, I'm adding a little bit of longer hair here on the lower part of the neck or, or rather on the part of the neck uh, just under the head because that part of, of the neck appears to be covered with some longer hair and then as we go lower, lower down the hair again gets a little bit shorter um, there is more shadow on the lower part of the neck which is facing away from the light source so I used uh, some more of that burnt sienna there but on this part of the neck here in the middle that's more exposed to the light source so I added a little bit more of that ivory colored pencil and here again I'm uh, continuing to work with uh, on the legs and uh, I just decided to finish this part of the background here I mostly work from left to right and from top to bottom but I thought that um, this was uh, a good time for me to finish this bluish part of the background because there would there would be no smudging uh, I, I just have one leg to finish so I covered that in the in the usual manner by applying the bluish color first and then some light grayish color and finally I added a few more clouds here in the top right corner of my drawing and uh, like I said that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to the clouds the middle part of the scene and the lower part of the scene are not going to have any clouds just like in the reference and I kind of like it that way so uh, I'm now continuing to work on this front leg. Uh, only a part of it, this top part is in the shadow, so we have a nice shadow area that's kind of connecting uh, the neck and this upper part of the leg and the belly area. So I'm going to try to I'll leave that as it is and maybe simplify that shadow area a little bit so that the lighter portions of the body would stand out in contrast. Now as for the sand here, or the lower part of the scene, I mostly use this sanguine colored pencil, uh, which is a little bit more reddish, but to make it a bit duller and to remove a little bit of that texture, I went over it with a bit of cinnamon colored pencil. Because I'm doing with this uh, cinnamon colored pencil the same thing that I did with the light uh, gray pencil, I'm essentially applying a lighter pencil on top of the darker one to muddy the colors a little bit and blend them So because the, I found that this was the best way to blend and here I'm going to muddy this uh, or blur out the area around the hooves around, around the lower part of the legs a little bit um, because I thought that that would be a nice effect and uh, I did add a few details in that shadow area around the neck and the upper part of the leg but for the most part I want it to remain a little bit simpler that shadow area a little bit simpler than the and then the lighter area of the body and because I thought that this contrast in texture as well as the contrast in value would look nice now again I'm working on this knee and that wrinkly area there and just adding some veins and sinews and things like that on the lower part of the leg and these details on the hooves um, so just a little bit of work on this uh, lower part of the scene and uh, finishing these corners where the drawing was secured with a tape and the drawing is almost done I'm adding some lighter details to this lower part of the scene so uh, the drawing is pretty much done now I would say that this experiment uh, the, this first drawing uh, with the UART sanded paper went pretty well I'm going to be trying some different and more complex subjects in the future I'm going to put my signature here in the lower right corner to wrap things up don't forget to check out my other videos and let me know what you think in the comments if you haven't subscribed already 
subscribe, give me a like. And for longer videos and more content, you should check out my Patreon. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.